Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be working more on Juno's office, which is my Beetle Gus Timber Tober project, because my Beetle Gus project, which is making a Beetlejuice project all August long, is taking me three months. <laughs> Today I'm going to be making some football players, American football. Now, coach. I'm not your coach. It may surprise you that the closest I've ever come to playing football is that one high school halftime show where I hit the timpani so hard that the drumstick broke in half and flew back on the field and almost took out a tuba player. That's a flag on the play! However, today I have done my research and I am ready to make some really cool football players. So put me in coach, I'm ready to play. Thankfully, I had a head start with this project because I ordered the three football player bodies from SAS Mini Dolls before August. I do also have Juno up in the top right corner, but I'm not going to be working with her in this video. She'll be saved for another video. I did my research, I downloaded some images so I could understand, hopefully, what I'm creating. And the best description I could see of the padding was this drawing. And thankfully, I had totally forgot that Mr. Technology played football, so he explained it a bit more to me as well. I printed out how the football helmets looked and the padding inside, and then of course a football player from the front and back, so that I can see what the back of the uniforms usually look like. Finally, I have my references from the actual movie so I can see what their uniforms look like. And then I printed out some pictures of them in 112 scale so I can build the players right on top of this printout and know that they are the right size. I realize because of the way the doll bodies are made, I am going to have to extend the sleeves. They can't have bare arms. They're going to have to have long sleeves underneath their jerseys. So I printed out a sample of how that looks. So hopefully this will all come together and create three cohesive and accurate-ish looking football players. I'm first going to lay them all out so that I know I have all of their body parts. Each one came with a torso slash head two hands, and two legs. I couldn't see that any of the football players were missing any of their appendages, so they're all going to be complete. And if you're new to this project or have never seen Beetlejuice, they are essentially zombie football players. They're, they have passed away, uh, so they are going to look a little rough by the end of this project. I put all the body parts together with pipe cleaners, and now I'm going to use an old t-shirt to wrap around the pipe cleaners to fill out their bodies. I'm using the white t-shirt for this because they are going to have white pants and if I use something brighter like a green t-shirt it may show through the white pants in the end and cause me some problems. So going with the white fabric that's going to be the finished clothing is a smart step in my opinion. I'm going to wrap all of the appendages until they are about the right thickness to match with their body type and then glue it in place. I am going to have one doll that's in the sitting position, so whenever I know I'm going to have a doll that's sitting, I like to create them from the start in the sitting position. This helps their clothing fit so much better. The other two are going to be standing, and these are my finished doll bodies. Now before I can add any clothing, I do need to make them a bit more blue. In the movie, they have this bluish hue to each one of them, and I've decided to do that with some chalk pastel. I'm going to shave it off of a chalk pastel stick and apply it with a brush. I think this will be a good way for their original skin tone to show through, but still give the netherworld effect of them looking a bit zombie-esque or like they've been decaying for a while. I'm first adding this straight onto the porcelain bodies, they do have a bit of texture, so they do pick up the chalk pastel. Once I have covered the entire skin with the chalk pastel, any part of the skin that's going to be seen, I'm going to seal it with a matte coat of spray. This is going to give it even more of a tooth for the second layer. As you can see, it is very subtle, and even in the end, once you get to the end of the video, you will see it has a subtle effect. It does give them a bit more of a zombie appearance, but it's probably not, it, well, it definitely doesn't end up as blue as it looks in the movie. However, when I get to the lighting stage, I may be able to add a bit more with the lighting process. 
I did have to use a little bit of a lighter blue on the darker skin tone to get it to show up, but I feel like it worked really well. And yes, I am going over the whites of the eyes, but I will paint them back on later once I get to the faces. And I had to remind myself not to forget the arms and legs because parts of the arms and legs will be showing once the uniform is complete. This is how they look before the spray is applied. The spray kind of tones down the blue a little bit, but it has a blue hue once everything is complete. I wanted to add more blue around the eye sockets. You know, this is a Tim Burton film, so I wanted to make sure and give that a, that really dark circle look that you always see in Tim Burton movies. However, I was using water with chalk pastel and did not realize that it would get so light once it dried. It looked a lot darker while the chalk pastel was wet, so essentially I had to take off as much as I could and then go over it with something darker so that it looked better on the face. This took some trial and error. I also tried to do some highlighting because I wanted there to be parts of the face that stuck out a little bit more. And this is because these are going to be inside of a football helmet. It's going to be recessed from the lighting. And I, kn I know they look just a little bit strange here but trust me we will get there uh, it like i said this just took some experimenting some testing things out because i've never done this process before and i didn't really know what would look good after i had done a spray base coat over all of my chalk pastel I decided to use acrylic paints to create the eyes. I think the eyes are gonna be the most important. Like I said, their faces are gonna be hidden in the shadow of a football helmet. So it's gonna be important for them to have nice bright eyes so that they catch the viewer's eye when they're looking into Juno's office and see the football players. I do like how it came out in the end. I think they do have that zombie-esque bluish look to them, but they still keep their original features. Now I did realize I messed up on one of their lips, but then I was like, wait, they're supposed to have all sorts of cuts and bruises from their accident. So I decided not to worry about it too much. And now I am going to get a little gory here with some red paint. However, this is the look we're going for to match our movie reference. Actually, compared to the movie, I kept it fairly tame, but that's because I really did like how their faces came out and I wanted them to look somewhat friendly. Now it's time for some football gear. I decided to start with the socks and shoes because I usually leave shoes for last and then I get frustrated because they take so long and I'm ready to be done with the project. And because I have to make three pairs of shoes for three football players, I just decided it would be best to get them out of the way at the beginning. To create the socks, I am just going to paint them on with some white acrylic paint. I felt like this was the best way to keep the socks tight to the legs and it was going to be the easiest for me to do. I, I really didn't know what material I was going to use to make socks that didn't look like they were just incredibly thick. I'm using some red to go around the top of the socks. I think this is really what's going to define them as socks and not part of the shoe that I eventually will make. This took a little bit of patience and they're not completely perfect, but I keep reminding myself I'm going to have to mess them up anyway, so that's okay. Now that all three pairs of socks were complete, I could focus on the shoes. The shoes are gonna be made out of Warbla, which you may remember from my previous projects. It's a type of plastic that can be warmed up and formed around something fairly easily. So the first thing I did was make a paper pattern of what I thought would work as a shoe. I got really lucky with this pattern. It was purely a guess, but it worked out really, really well. I cut six of these shapes out of Warbla. Actually, I cut one first to test it, and then I cut five more. All I'm going to do is warm it up with my heat gun, and once it gets floppy, I'm going to place my shoe in the center, the shoe that's formed onto the doll's feet, and then I'm just going to push the warbla over top of the shoe, and I did the front and the back first. This is going to cover the toe and the heel, and then if need be, I could warm up the sides a little bit more and then push the sides up to cover the side of the foot. I know initially it's not looking too great, but the thing about Warbla is that you can keep warming it up and messing with it until you're happy with the shape. 
After I warmed it up a second time, I could round out the toes and the heel a bit more, and then I could squish in some of the seams so it didn't look as much like a clog and started to look more like a sports shoe. This took some patience and just some learning on my part to figure out what would work. So here you can see the before and after on how it looks when it's initially applied to the foot on the left and then the right is after it's been warmed up and reshaped and worked on and I just, you know, it just takes a little bit of patience and so I'm glad I didn't get disheartened the first time I put it onto the foot. I think it worked out really well, just one layer of warbler was a good thickness. And then to finish off the details, I added a little tongue that made it definitely look more like a sports shoe and then I could just blend it in to the rest of the shoe. And yes, I did have dried black paint on my ball stylus, which <laughs> ended up on the shoe. So that's all that was. To create the cleat look, I'm not gonna create cleats, but I wanted something that looked like that. I needed to add soles to the shoes separately. So I heated up the bottom of the shoes and I heated up another piece of warbla and that allowed the glue to activate so the two pieces could stick together. Then I could cut carefully around the shoe to create the sole of the shoe. I have found flush cutters to be one of the best tools with working with a borbla. It cuts through it really easily and it can get really close to the edge of objects. Once the sole was applied, I could warm it back up and I used an awl to push little grooves into the shoe soles. This is going to just give a little bit of an illusion of cleats, even though I'm not making cleats themselves. I think it just makes the shoe look a little bit more sporty than it would if it had a flat sole. So I'm pretty happy with the results of this. I only had to repeat it two more times on two other dolls. But once everything had cooled down, I could just use a small paintbrush with some red paint to paint the entire shoe. I am going to be painting the sole white. I think that would help it stand out against the shoe. I didn't actually go in and check the movie reference to see if their shoes were red. I just kind of went with what I thought would look best with the uniform I'm about to create. Now it's time to focus on the padding. So I'm going to be creating the upper thigh pads and the knee pads mostly and then shoulder pads. I'm not really going to focus much on the pads that are on the back of the doll because the back of the doll is not going to be seen. I still want it to look nice, but I'm mostly focusing really hard on how the front is looking. I'm using some quilt batting and cutting it in the general shape of the padding, that how it looks to me, and then placing it straight onto the fabric that I used to create its body. It's going to be glued down here. I think it's going to be much easier to glue the padding to the doll's body rather than trying to glue it to the inside of the uniform pieces. For the shoulder pads, I just cut a shape that I thought would work and then tested it on my doll. I still want his arms to be able to move. I cut two for each shoulder because I do want to make sure I get the right amount of bulk up at the top of the shoulder area. But even with two layers, I was a little nervous that once I added the jersey, it would push down on the quilt batting and you wouldn't see the shape. So I'm going to sandwich a piece of cardstock in between each of these shoulder pad pieces. I feel like this is going to give it more structure. And then when I add the jersey, I don't have to worry about it being scrunched and not holding its shape. Before gluing everything down, I made sure to make exact copies for all of my other dolls. I'm having to remember to do this because once it's glued down, it's really hard to just trace around and make another one. But once I know I have enough pieces for each doll, I can move forward and glue everything down and then I don't have to worry about sneezing and it flying all over the place and <laughs> me losing all of my pieces. When it comes to the shoulder pads, I wanted to use some hot glue on these. I felt like it would really help me keep them in place. I'm adding hot glue to the very top so that it will sit down on top of the shoulder very tight to the upper part of the doll's body because if it's not tight and it kind of moves around, it could make it look like they don't have a neck, like it could go too far up close to the bottom of their head. And then I also added some more hot glue around the base of the shoulder pads and underneath the arms, but not underneath the armpit to where the arm wouldn't move anymore. So it was, it was a little bit of a process to get it in place, but I was happy with the application and those shoulder pads weren't going anywhere. 
These socks and shoes alone almost took me the entire first half of the game. A lot longer than I thought it would. But now we're ready to move on to the rest of the uniform. I had to pull out the dreaded sewing machine for this project, but I knew it would make this so much easier, especially since I had to make three of everything. I'm going to start off with the sleeves, which are going to cover up the fact that my dolls don't have skin all the way up their arms. I'm cutting really, really close to the seam that I just created with the thread, and then I'm going to turn this inside out. I'm just using a basic gray old t-shirt that nobody was wearing anymore, and I cut it up, and I think this is going to work really well. The gray just kind of blends in, doesn't stand out as if it shouldn't be there. So I think this was a good move to help cover up my doll's arms and make it less conspicuous that they didn't have an entire arm. And of course, on my last sleeve, my bobbin runs out. I don't know how it runs out every single project when I sew such little things so not very often. I don't know how that happens, but I got the final sleeve done. Here's how they are looking. And then I could move on to the pants. The tricky part about this project is that everything has to be pretty tight to the body. And this is difficult in dolls because just everything has to be custom fit. I laid my first doll on a double sheet of fabric and then traced around the sides and then up the center where the legs come together. What I'm going to do is sew along the two outside lines and then sew around the interior line. This is going to create seams that I can cut very close to. So here's, you can kind of see, I used some brown thread on the bobbin, so that's why you can see it really well. I'm going to cut really, really close to that thread line, and that's going to give me as little fabric as possible when I flip the pants inside out. I'm cutting up the center, making sure not to cut my thread, and that's going to give me my pair of pants. Then I can flip them inside out and give it a try on my doll. It is going to be very tough to get it over the padding, and that's why I used a stretchy white old shirt, and I knew it would give a little bit of stretch and it would show off the padding through the pants. It is a little bit too big around the waist, but I will deal with that later. For now, it works on the legs, so I'm happy. The bottom of the pant legs are looking a little bit too wide, so I'm going to use a gathering stitch and go all the way around the lower calf. This was a little bit tricky to do since it's already on the doll, but I was able to do it and then I could tie the string. This gathered the bottom of the pants up and then I could use one more piece of this white cloth to go around to make kind of a cuff at the bottom of the pants. This is going to make it look so much more like a pair of pants that would be used in sports rather than just a pair of pants that you would lounge in. I did the same effect to the top of the pants, which won't be seen, but this will keep it close to the doll's body. So when I add the jersey and try to make the two meet in the middle, it'll just be that much easier. I added glue underneath the area that was being gathered to make sure it stuck to the doll's body. So now that all of the gathering is done, I am going to finally glue on those pieces I mentioned at the bottom of the pants. I'm doing this very carefully so I don't get glue in any places I don't want it to be. And instead of trying to overlap the fabric, which would create more bulk, I'm just pinching it at the back of the pant leg and I'm gonna let it dry that way. Once it's dry, I can cut off the excess fabric and then I have a cuff at the bottom of my football player pants. And now we can finally move on to the exciting part, the jerseys. I'm using an old red t-shirt for this part of the project. I've been saving it for a while, specifically for these football players. I'm not quite sure the best way to create the jersey because it has to go around the shoulder pads and I've never really made a shirt shaped like this before, but I'm just gonna do the same thing I was doing before where I'm sketching around the shape of the body and I'm just leaving a little bit of extra space to make up for the fact that this is going around a 3D object. I'm going to sew along all of my pen marks except around the neckline because that is ultimately just going to be cut open. The nice thing about working with t-shirt material is it doesn't fray really bad so I can just cut into it and not worry about it coming apart. I sewed along the pin marks on one side of the shirt and then I did the same on the other side. 
Now I can cut really close to the seam and then I'm also going to cut the openings of the arms. They're not going to be hemmed because I'm not quite sure, I'm, I'm really going to kind of destroy the edges of these jerseys anyway, so I don't need to worry about a hem. I realized there was no way I was going to get this jersey over his head, so I had to cut up the back and create a Barbie style shirt that's solid in the front and there will be a seam in the back. I did realize this was a little bit too tight. It did fit, but it just didn't give the amount of room that I wanted in the jersey. So I remade the shape and I just made it a bit wider so I would have a little bit more wiggle room on the sides of the shoulder pads and around the waist of my football player. Especially because this is my smallest football player, I want to make sure I have a jersey that fits everybody. So now that I'm happy with the shape, I can trace it and create two more of these exactly. Now that I have three complete jerseys, I can finally put away my sewing machine and move on to the numbers that need to go on the front of the jerseys because what are football jerseys without the big numbers so you can identify your favorite player. The piece of white fabric I had for this part of the project was just a little bit too thin, so I decided to paint over it with some white acrylic paint. The benefit of this is that the paint will also fray check the fabric, so when I cut out the numbers, it won't fall apart. I chose three random numbers that I was able to see on the jerseys from the movie and printed them out in a sports font from my computer. I made sure to size them to what I thought would be the correct size and then I traced them onto my fabric. I guess I could have just printed the numbers out on paper and it would have been okay, but I thought the fabric would look more authentic. I'm going to be using the same acrylic markers that I used in the last video to outline the numbers to give them just a little bit more interest. And this is so much easier to do with a pen than it would be to do with a brush. I actually should have thought about this when I was going around their socks. It might have been easier if I had used the red pen. Cutting them out was pretty easy. I just used a sharp pair of scissors and then when it got into the really intricate part of the numbers, I was able to use my craft knife to get really close to the edge. The one thing I should have done was gone around the outside of the numbers again with the black, but that's okay, it, it'll work out in the end. I put the jersey back on my doll to see where the numbers needed to sit once it was on my doll's body. I marked it with a pin and then I could officially glue on my numbers. I'm gonna make sure the numbers sit in the same spot on each one of the jerseys, even though I'm not custom fitting them to each doll. Now the numbers can be randomly assigned to each of my players and I can start attaching the jerseys. I did not expect to like the football uniforms so much at this point and for once I'm not looking forward to aging these because they're looking so good, so fresh and so clean and so it's, it's going to be a little bit hard this time to rough them up. When it came to attaching the jerseys, I realized I was going to have to first attach the area around the shoulder pads and then work on the area around the waist separately. I wanted to have at least one football player with his jersey tucked into his pants, and in order to do this, I thought I was just going to fold it under, but it made it way too bulky, so I decided to cut off the bottom part of the jersey, which was very nerve-wracking because I was afraid I was going to mess it up. However, I was happy with this result in the end, so it was a good step to take. Then I could use a bit more glue and attach the bottom part of the jersey, which is much more snug to the body. I added glue underneath and pressed it down to make sure everything stuck in place. To create more details in the pants, I added a folded over piece of white material that matches the pants, and I'm going to cut that into the shape of a fly, which is going to be attached to the front. It is going to overlap the bottom of the jersey just a little bit, but that's going to be ultimately covered up by a waistband that finishes off the look of the pants. And this is what's going to help the jersey look like it's tucked in. I was initially using a single layer of fabric, but it was way too see-through, so I doubled it up and then I attached it just like I did with the bottom of the pant legs. I pulled the waistline tight and let it dry. 
While that was drying, I finished up the sleeves, which all I did was add some glue underneath the armpit and then push the jersey up underneath the arm. And I think this gave more of a shape to the body and it didn't feel like the area around the shoulder pads was as overwhelming. Now I'm going to do the same thing to each doll. However, I've changed it up a little bit. This doll has his jersey untucked halfway and still tucked in on the other side. This is going to come in effect whenever I start aging the jersey. And for the one that's sitting down, I'm leaving it completely untucked so that it's a little bit easier to pose him and I don't have to worry about if it's an awkward transition from the jersey to the pants. Finally, it's time to make a field goal with the most important part of the uniform, the helmet. Is that how they hit it? Just like I did with the shoes, I'm going to be creating the helmet with Warbla, but I'm not quite as certain on how I'm going to do this as I was with the shoes. I'm finding some different things in my collection to see what might be a good shape to form the helmet around. Ultimately, I found these glass beads that I thought would be the perfect size. The helmet does have to be quite a bit bigger than the head to look correct because it does need room for padding. So this helmet that I originally bought, even though it just almost fit, was still way too small if I compare it to the bead that I think is the right size to be the interior of the helmet. So I am going to give it a try. It helps that this is a bead because I can add a string through the center of it. So once I'm done creating my helmet over the top, Hopefully, I will be able to pull it out from inside the warbla and have an empty cavity inside the helmet. I'm first starting with just a simple sheet of warbla because I don't even know what shape to create a pattern for. I've never made a helmet before in my life. In my first attempt, I just warm it up and then slowly push it down over the top of the glass bead, trying to keep it as close to the surface as possible. And then once it's cooled off, I can pull my bead out to reveal this shape. Uh, not quite a helmet yet, but I'm hoping I can use my sample that I previously bought to get something that looks a little bit closer. I'm using some flush cutters to go around the edge to open what I would consider to be a face hole. Now at this moment, it kind of looks like he's wearing a walnut on his head. So this is not quite right, but it does give me a starting point on whether this is the right size or if I think this will get me close to what I want. I'm using this first shape to draw out what I think might be a good pattern. And then I'm going to make cuts in this pattern so I can more easily push it down without there being a lot of waviness. Now, in my mind, I'm thinking this is going to work great, but there are bumps along the way. And in the end, I end up with this hat that looks kind of like the flying nun, but slowly I start taking pizza slices out of the sides and I try to reflect that on my pattern so I can do this two more times when I make the helmets for the other two football players. It is so nice that Warbla can just be warmed up again because I started just working on one flap at a time. And once I got everything pushed down, I could remove any excess pieces. And of course I made it reflect on my pattern so I could hopefully duplicate this again. Once all of the excess pieces were cut off, I could rewarm the area where the warbler was very clearly cut. And then I used a ball stylus pushing against the glass bead on the inside. And that helped me just kind of smooth everything over. Now it's definitely not going to be a perfect fix, but it does look a lot better once I rewarm and smooth. So I do think this process might work. Now, once I had done this, it was a bit more difficult to get the bead out from inside of the warbla. I had to kind of just get a little bit of a gap in between the two, but I, it did work. I was able to get the bead out and I had something much closer to a helmet, but still not quite right. At this point, I feel like it looks a bit more like he's going to go get his hair done at the salon, which he may be wanting to do, but it's not the look I'm going for with a helmet. I switched it around and I think at this point we're looking a bit more army helmet, but we're getting closer. 
I pulled out the actual football helmet I had in my studio and decided to see if I could trace the shapes that I was seeing and then cut with my flush cutters to get more of a football helmet shape. And this actually did work fairly well. It got me closer into the ballpark. I was able to rewarm things and kind of form them down to a smaller size. Right now it's looking very globe-like, very spherical, and I needed it to be more head-shaped. So I warmed it up and pushed in the sides. Now I'm seeing a bit more of the face and I think it's I think it's getting there. But I did notice that the back of the helmet wasn't quite right at this point. It was just a bit too flat. So I continued to mess with the shape and I was able to cut out like this half moon shape from each side and then I felt like it fit a bit more. It's supposed to go and have like some room for the shoulders if the shoulders are supposed to come up. So I think this is along the right path. So you would hope that I'd be able to just duplicate this for each one, but no, each one came out looking very different, <laughs> but that is okay because in the end, these football players are going to be very roughed up and that includes their helmets. So they don't have to be perfect. The final touch I'm gonna put on the warbler part of the helmet is to put this strip of warbler down the center. For some reason, I feel like this helps it so much be more in the realm of a sports helmet. Also maybe like fighter pilot or jet pilot, I think. And then I used my ball stylus to smooth the edges down so it looked like it was all one piece. The helmets are still very rough in their shape, but at this point I was done and I thought, you know, this might be good enough. Like at some point you just have to decide if things are good enough. <laughs> I'm using acrylic paints and I, initially I was going to paint them red and then I looked back to my Beetlejuice reference and their helmets are mostly white. So I left the stripe down the center red and then painted the sides of the helmet white. I'm going to be spraying them with triple thick. I actually did three layers of triple thick and this stuff kind of helps fill in some bumps and grooves although you can still see them in the final piece. While they were drying, I decided to sketch out the face mask part of it. And initially I was going to do the part that goes around the eyes. I did them separately so I could glue them on separately, but it just, I feel like it covered up the face too much and I spent way too much time on the face for you not to be able to see it on each doll. So I'm just going to be using the part that goes in front of the mouth and attaching that to the helmet. I think it still very much gives off football without having too much in the way of seeing the actual characters. The face mask pieces were laser cut from cardstock, so they're very lightweight. I just tacky glued them onto either side and once they were glued on, I painted them gray, which is the color of the face mask you can see in the movie. I'm using some super glue gel to glue a little bead on either side, which I'm hoping will look like the way that the face mask is attached to the helmet. I will paint this later with gray. I'm also going to use some of that same super glue and smear it on the back of the cardstock paper. I'm hoping this will give it a little bit more strength so it's not so easy to break or tear once it's attached to my football players. And of course, a football helmet needs a lot of protection to protect the skull underneath it. So I'm going to be adding little bits of quilt batting. This is the same stuff I use whenever I am upholstering chairs, but I think it will work for this purpose as well. I just added it along the forehead area to the back of the head and to either side. Now this first helmet is my favorite and it fits like a glove on this football player and I wish I could tell you that the other two had the same accuracy and the same satisfaction when they were applied, but this is the only one that fits perfectly. <laughs> the other two are a little bit loose and a little bit strangely shaped, but that is okay. They add to the story of the accident that these football players have been in, and if they're a little bit misshapen, then th that's all right. Now, I probably should have cleaned up the red paint on my desk because when I start uh, injuring my football players here, it's going to look very gory, but that's just red paint, don't worry. <laughs> I took some time to make sure I had the best helmet for each player, and I do think 
I got them as close as I could and then I added some glue to the inside of the quilt batting just along the forehead and the back of the head because I didn't want to scrape it along the sides of the face that I worked so hard on. Then I pushed the helmet in place and let it dry. The final touch to create these football uniforms that I'm about to totally mess up is to add these little lace bows to the fronts of their shoes. I'm not going to add the laces, uh, but I thought just adding something down there would really help the shoes. Now, as you can see in my reference, these football players are really, really messed up. One of them even has the face grill or the face mask going through his face. So I am going to go light on these guys. I really like them. Uh, I can always add more if I feel like it's just not standing out enough. Uh, and that's when I age anything. I always say go light at first. You can always add more. I'm cutting into the jerseys first and just starting to make some holes and tears, especially on my football player that has one side of his jersey untucked, like I want there to be a reason. I also messed up his face mask because it was the most like in front of his face, so I thought if I could break it a little bit, you could see a bit better. Now I am mixing up some red and brown to look like blood. Uh, but if that bothers you, you can pretend that this is a football game that's happening up on Crimson Peak and it's just mud and, and we're all good. But I'm going to be adding this to all the areas where the jerseys have been cut or there's some kind of injury. Like I said in the beginning, it doesn't look like any of them are missing limbs. So I just had to kind of figure out what I thought might be a fatal injury. It was a really weird project to have to think through. When it came to the helmets, I used some black to make it look like the helmets had been pushed against something, of course, you know, in the accident that they were in. And then I added some more black to the areas of the uniform that were torn up. And I think this really draws your eye to the fact that the uniform is tore up more than it did with just the red uh, mud. So now that my football players are all torn up and I've ruined my beautiful football uniforms, I'm going to let them dry and then we can put them into Juno's office. So this is my favorite part of every single video to see how they actually look in the space. There's not a lot of red in here, so they are really, really going to stick out. I have my one friend who's reclining. He looks incredibly relaxed, just waiting for Juno. And then I do plan to have the other two football players standing in front of the window on the left because there's nothing really to see over there. It will be backlit by some lights. So I think it would just be a nice frame to highlight them in the room. But I am so happy with this project. I knew I was going to enjoy creating the football players and I truly, honestly did. And of course, before I go, I need to show you my MVPs who were helping me all along the way on the sidelines. All right, coach, that's all I've got for you in today's video. You let me know if you think I scored a touchdown with these three dolls. I'm so excited to have them in my project and I'm even more excited to take this helmet off. <laughs> I can't wait to keep going on Juno's office. I still have to make Juno's doll, make some more accessories for her desk. Oh, and the lighting. That's going to be very important for this project. I hope you all have a very sporty week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. on the play. There's a flag on the play. Players committed a penalty. Yes, flag on the play. Shoulder pad keeps falling down. I think that's a common problem. Football. Football. the strappy things because I didn't know how to connect them.